Who was King Arthur really? Or let's say, who inspired Geoffrey of Monmouth, the 12th century British monk and writer, when he came up with all the details of the Arthur legend, which we for the first time ever read in his work? Was there possibly a real story behind Geoffrey of Monmouth's version of King Arthur? I have already made a video about King Arthur, but now I would like to delve deeper into a particularly interesting theory about King Arthur. A theory which is not my own, but it is by one of our Sol Invictus Patreon supporters who named himself Autari Drake and we shall soon see why he named himself such. In my previous Arthur video, I spent a lot of time talking about the late Roman and early Brytonic influence on the Arthur legend and that there was a multitude of different Romans, romano Britons, and even Welsh kings or princes that could have served as a basis for the Arthur legend. But now I want to present this alternate and in my opinion really fascinating view by our Sol Invictus member Autari Drake. In his view, the origin of the Arthur legend is not to be found in Britain, but in Italy. And I know what you're thinking, we will talk about how on earth that story would have migrated from Italy to Britain. This story begins with the reign of the Lombard king Autari, who reigned towards the end of the 6th century in Italy. We remember that the Lombards had invaded Italy under their king Albuin in the year 568 and following years, conquering these lands that had been previously held by the Eastern Romans under their Emperor Justinian, thereby destroying the Ostrogothic Kingdom which had existed in Italy before that. So these events here take place after Italy had seen a rapid succession from the Western Roman Empire to Germanic rulers, back to the Eastern Romans and then to the Lombards all within the time span of not even a hundred years. Alboin reigned in Italy for only four years, having been assassinated in 572 by a certain Peredeo, very likely instigated by a plot of the Eastern Romans, who were really unhappy to see the Lombards having invaded Italy. The next Lombard king was Clef, who was also assassinated after only 13 months of reign and again, probably the Romans were behind this and hence a long interregnum of 10 years began in which the Lombards had no king. And it is in that time that the story of Autari begins. Autari was elected king of the Lombards when he was still young. He was said to have blonde hair like King Arthur and he was elected to be King of the Lombards after a 10 year long interregnum by a group of Lombard nobles. So basically Autari united the kingdom of Alboin after an interregnum. Now interestingly Arthur united the lands of Albion after an interregnum. Alboin and Albion that's only a difference of two interchanged letters. Arthur fought against his evil sister Morgan le Fay, who is sometimes also called Morgana. Now Autari on the other hand and his successor fought against the Avars under their king Organa. Now the word Avar in Old Norse translates to Alfar, which will be translated as elf in the English language. Elves and fairies were interchangeable words in those times and so Organa the Avar would be transformed into Morgana the Elf or Morgan the Fairy, which then is of course Morgan le Fay. This is already fascinating, but there are many more similarities. Peridio the warrior who assassinated Alboin is in this theory very likely where we get the early name for the Arthurian knight Percival, because he was called in the early days Peridur which sounds interestingly similar to Peredeo. And now to something different. You love Roman history, I love Roman history, right? That's why you're here. What if I told you that you can buy Roman history as a present for yourself or someone else? 
Enter the SPQR shop. They make amazing rings, amazing pendants, attributes, terracottas, coin replicas. They make a lot of wonderful replicas of Roman items and it's all 100% handcrafted. Let me tell you, the level of craftsmanship is absolutely incredible. You can even buy the one and only Majorianus ring. The ghost of the Emperor Majoran himself once appeared to me in a dream and told me that the power of Majoran himself is imbued into that ring. Okay, maybe the whole story was completely made up, but the ring sure looks cool and you can only get it on the SPQR shop. But there are of course many other rings and amazing items that the SPQR shop crafts with an incredible attention to detail. And with a code in the description, you will get a 20%, I repeat, a 20% price reduction on every purchase on the SPQR shop. So don't hesitate and buy something nice for you or someone else as a present who also happens to like Roman history. Thanks for your attention and back to the video. Similarly, there was a duke among the Lombards named Ewin. And this is where the inspiration for the Arthurian knight Ewain comes from. Merlin is commonly known as being inspired by Saint Ambrose we also find that while there isn't a Camelot, there was a Treaty of Andalot in 587 signed in that city of Andalot in the then Frankish Kingdom, which was in effect while Autari reigned in Italy from AD 584 to 590. Now where would the word Excalibur come from? Well, Autari possibly gave himself the title of Rex Calibria after conquering the region of Calibria in Italy. And over the centuries, Rex Calibria became Excalibur. Autari's wife Theodelinda is of great importance as well. Her devotion to the Catholic faith won for her the Iron Crown of Lombardy, which was given to her by Pope Gregory the Great and said to have been forged with a nail of the true cross. The sapphire cup from which she drank is dated back to the first century and this may have well been identified in those days as the Holy Grail. However, the cup was probably not made of sapphire but of Roman blue glass, which would have been a cheaper material in the first century. What lends credence to this is that the sapphire cup was donated to the cathedral of Monza by Theodelinda herself, as though it was a relic shortly after being used by her in her marriage to her second husband Agilulf, successor of Autari. So this is how the legend of the Holy Grail might have developed. But how then did the legend of Autari migrate from the Kingdom of the Lombards to Britain? Well, the Saxons had migrated together with the Lombards into Italy and not being allowed to rule themselves with their own laws, they sought to return to their homelands which bordered on the English Channel. Logically, of course, they would have been in contact with their kinsmen, the Saxons of Britain. And thus, by this interaction and probably many Saxons migrating to Britain themselves, we can assume that the events they witnessed in Italy while with the Lombards thus became transplanted into British legend. The king who united the lands of Albuin became the king who united the lands of Albion. It is also likely that Geoffrey of Monmouth knew about Autari. This seems very probable, not only in the way in which he describes King Arthur, namely his youth, appearance and circumstances when he became king, but also because he wrote that this Arthur fought against a Roman named Lucius Tiberius. And interestingly, not long before Autari became king of the Lombards, the Eastern Roman Emperor Tiberius II reigned. Tiberius, which sounds interestingly similar to Lucius Tiberius. And it is quite clear that Autari fought against the Eastern Romans as well, expanding his Lombard kingdom and conquering lands held previously by the Eastern Romans. So to sum it up, here are some of the fascinating similarities between the story of Autari and the legendarium of King Arthur. Autari, blonde hair and young, uniting the lands of Albuin after an interregnum, bringing a golden age for his kingdom. 
Arthur, blonde and young, uniting the lands of Albion after an interregnum, bringing a golden age for his kingdom. Morgana the Avar, Morgana the Fairy, Morgan le Fay. Albuin, Albion. Andalot, Camelot. Merlin or Emrys, St. Ambrose. Rex Calibria, Excalibur. Ewin, Ewain. Peredeo, Peredur or Percival. Dagobert, a Frankish king from around the time of Autari, would become Dagonet, a lesser known Arthurian knight. The Isle of Comachina might have served as the possible inspiration for Avalon, as Autari conquered the island from the Romans and it was said that the Lombards found many riches on the island. Theodelinda's sapphire cup probably would have become the Holy Grail. Tiberius II would have become Lucius Tiberius. I personally find Autari's theory highly interesting and very compelling because it is a non-standard, non-obvious theory. And many names, places and even events seem to match. So I can indeed imagine that Geoffrey of Manmouth, the father of the Arthur legend if you will, was inspired by these events, these stories who had migrated with the Lombard Saxons to Britain and which there had been mixed with late Roman or early Brythonic heroes. Now I personally think that Arthur might have been a mixture of late Roman military commanders or early Brythonic princes who had fought against the Anglo-Saxons. But it is possible that the events of Autari migrated with the Saxons to Italy after the late 6th century or early 7th century and there mingled with the other pre-existing legends. And thus, over the period of the following centuries, the Arthur legendarium developed. Highly, highly interesting stuff for sure and as I said, this is not my theory, but this entire video is based on the theory of our Sol Invictus member Autari Drake. So a big shout out to Autari Drake for giving me the inspiration to make this video and presenting this highly fascinating theory. As a Soul Invictus member, by the way, you can wish for a video and I will then make an entire video based on your wish. Of course, it should have something to do with late Roman history. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating topic of late Roman history. And please consider supporting this channel via Patreon or via YouTube membership because it is the support of our amazing Patreons and YouTube members that makes this channel even possible. You would have my utmost gratitude. I would like to thank everyone, seriously everyone who is supporting my Orianos in any form, be it through Patreon, through a YouTube membership, through a PayPal donation or simply by watching. Thank you for supporting my Orianos so that we can keep this a channel about late Roman history. And if you want to learn more about the Arthurian legend, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you want to learn more about how life in Britain might have been after it was abandoned by the Romans, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and benevalete.